Jim Gray and I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is Gunworks, located in uh, down East Main in the town of Harrington. Today's shotgun we're going to dis uh, discuss and disassemble for cleaning is going to be a Browning A5. Actually this particular shotgun here is uh, made by Remington based on the Browning A5 model. Savage has a, has a model of this shotgun and there were even some produced in Japan. So uh, these guns are all going to basically disassemble the same. So as with any project that you're going to do, you want to make sure that the shotgun is empty. I want to start off by removing the wood. There will be a small screw here in the back of the stock. Well, this one's going to be a little bit stubborn. Okay. We'll just set the buck off to the side. Now the Browning's going to disassemble pretty similar to this, but this particular gun here has got a, uh, a little piece on the end of it, so you pull that out, and that gives you a little leverage to turn the screw on the end. And like I said, this one is a Remington Model 11 Sportsman. Okay, we'll set that off <clears throat> to the side over here. And the barrel just pulls off the front. Now, all these shotguns are recoil operated. They're not gas operated. So real quickly, we're going to briefly discuss this uh, piston and brake assembly here. It's actually not a piston, but this is your brake. What you can do is, based on how you set this up inside the shotgun, you can slow the action down or you can let it uh, run a little bit faster. But basically, you're going to have a, a steel ring here. And you're going to have a little bronze bushing. And if you notice on the inside, these little grooves and lands here. This basically right here will squeeze against the magazine tube and it slows the action down. And you can put them in different places, like if you're shooting weaker shells, you can remove the recoil spring. And all this will go down here or up on this end. You'll have to experiment with that. If your shotgun's working a little sluggish, you can move that around. So we'll take this brake assembly and we'll set this off to the side. Remove your recoil spring. Alright. <clears throat> now what I'd like to do next is remove the recoil spring inside here. Now this is under spring pressure. So what I like to do is I'll put the end of my finger over this while I'm driving the pin out and leave the pin in it so it doesn't shoot across the room. Take your little pin out, push in on the tip of it right there. And you can remove your uh, spring assembly. That's a little wooden plug that holds it in place, and you'll see the hole where your pin goes through to hold that in there. Next thing you do is flip the gun over, and you have these little screws right here. Okay, that's how you're going <clears> to <throat> remove the trigger assembly. This top one, well, that screw's a little bit tough. Some of these older guns sometimes, you've uh, got to run into a problem with them. The screw's sticking. There we go. Now, on the Browning, <clears throat> it's going to be just a little bit different than the Remington. Remington and the Browning, one of them is going to have a screw that goes all the way through, one is going to be threaded on this side and be just a pin that pushes through. But they're all going to have these tiny little screws that go on the top. That locks them and keeps them from rotating. Don't want to lose those screws if you can avoid it. We'll get this other one out. Okay, once we start turning that, like I said, on the, on the Remington's here, this is going to be like a little, a little non-threaded pin. 
I'll have to push that one. So we can work that loose. There we go. Corrosion in there. On the Brownings, that'll be threaded. On the Remington, it's not threaded. It's just a push pin. Then you remove your rear other screw back here. Once you have that other screw, you can pull that pin out and your entire trigger assembly just comes right out the bottom. Now as far as cleaning goes, this is about all you have to do as far as getting that trigger assembly there. You can uh, put it on fire, very gently squeeze the trigger, and let that roll forward. And that's, that way you have access to everything in here to clean it. It's pretty simple. When you have the gun disassembled at this point, Next part you're going to take out, you'll see this little spring right here, this V-spring. This is the same V-spring that I had mentioned in the Remington Model 81 video. And you can tell these are Browning designs. But you'll want to remove this. And the way you'll do that is you'll let up on the, the little follower piece, take your finger, push down on that, and pull that out off the stub, and lift that up and remove it. All right, once the spring is out, the next thing you're going to remove is going to be this piece right here. I, I mentioned it was a follower earlier. I'm, I'm kind of confusing my terms. Actually, it's a shell lifter or cartridge lifter. The way that comes out, if you'll notice on both sides of the receiver here, you have a large screw and a small screw together. You'll need to remove both the small screws first because these small screws are what prevents the larger ones from turning. Now, I had mentioned before in some of my other videos, you don't want to just grab any set of screwdrivers to start uh, monkeying with these guns. Screws for guns take a special type of hollow ground screwdriver because they're flat. You can't just jam any old tapered screw down, or screwdriver down in there or you'll end up boogering the screws up. So we'll remove the two small ones first. Like I said, even though this is a Remington, Browning's come apart basically the same way, and so does the Savage. I'm going to remove the two large screws that hold this uh, cartridge or, or shell lifter in place. I'm going to set that one here. And we'll remove this one. should be able to just lift that up and right out. Easy access to cleaning that. Now for further disassembly, you'll notice there's a little cutout notch right here on the side of the receiver. You're going to line a pin up with that and you're going to punch that pin out. And I'll show you right where that pin is. We'll push, we'll push the bolt cock and handle back out of the way. We'll line this pin up, and I'll hold it in place and show you where that pin is. See the pin right here? What you want to do is keeping that in place, you'll flip the gun over. You'll notice there's a hole on this side. And what you're going to do is drive that pin out from this opposite side. Now with that pin removed, you're going to have a, a little spring and a locking piece that's going to pop out. Once you have those removed and set off to the side, holding your bolt in place, push forward on the bolt and you know you can remove the bolt handle. Push that little uh, 
tail up inside there and the bowl will come out the front. Now, like I said, these Remingtons are going to be similar but just a little bit different from the Browning. So we'll go ahead and continue with the disassembly of this. Now to get this uh, locking block and everything else out of here, see your little locking piece that comes up? What you'll do is you'll push forward on that. You'll notice you have another pin here in this center hole. Okay. We're going to set that and we're going to drive this pin out. Sometimes it's a little easier said than done. Remove that part. bolt just rotates out of the top right there, or your locking part comes out of the top of the bolt. Last part's going to be your firing pin. All you got to do is just push in on the tip of the firing pin and your uh, firing pin retainer will just drop right out. Now the browning is going to be just a little bit different. It's going to be pretty similar but just a little bit different from the Remington. If you do need to remove the extractor uh, because of a weak spring or broken part right here, you'll notice if you look on the top, on this particular gun, that's been pinned into place. You really don't want to remove any parts like that unless you absolutely have to. But if you need to, you can uh, go over and drive that pin out from the underside through this hole and remove your extractor parts. But for cleaning, once you're down to this point, you can take a little bit of solvent, spray it down in there and work it a little bit. Use some compressed air to blow any crud or trash out. And this is going to be your Browning A5, or in this case, Remington Model 11 semi automatic shotgun, completely stripped for cleaning, and all the parts are laid out. Now, at this point, I haven't showed you how to put it all back together because basically it's going to reassemble the way, same way it came apart. But there's one little part here that I, I think that I need to include so you won't get confused. When you go put your trigger assembly back in, push down on your trigger, on your hammer spring here, and you'll see there's a little roller on the back. You'll catch, whoops, you need to catch that and lock it. And when it's time to put this back inside, if you try to put it in with the bolt forward, you're going to have difficulties. So what you want to do is lock your bolt to the rear and then put it in. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time getting the holes to line up. So let's see, we'll go in. Yeah, you definitely, definitely reassemble everything exactly the same. This is the only tricky part that I wanted to include because this is the only real trick I can think of. Everything else is going to go back into the gun exactly the way it came apart. So you just line your holes up, get everything in there. But if you do this without making sure that you have the bolt locked to the rear, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it back together. Something you're going to notice about the Remington versus the Browning A5. The Browning A5 is going to have a little latch right over here on the front that's missing on the Remington. All that is is a magazine cutoff. You flip that in one direction and it does not allow the ammunition to feed. It turns the gun into a single shot at best. Or you can flip it back and it will continue to feed from the magazine. But that's going to be basically about it as far as your uh, disassembly. And this is the only trick I know that you need to know. For reassembly. Thank you for watching this latest Gunworks video. Down East Gunworks is a full service farm repair service for all your long guns and handguns that includes a high tech machine shop for tooling obsolete parts. Old or new, if you have a farm that needs attention, Gunworks can probably fix it, solve it, code it, and make it work. If you're living in Down East Maine, come by the shop for a visit. We're located on Route 1 in Harrington. If you live elsewhere, you can reach us by going to the website www.downeastgunworks.com or calling the shop at area code 207-483-2175. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave me a comment and rate the video. 
If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll always know when I've posted something new. And thanks again for watching.